Hey guys, another big week at Legacy Collectibles. In fact, we got about 140 guns in just this week. Now I'm gonna have to break it up and show them to you starting right now. I wanna start out by doing a couple shout outs. First of all, Jim and Dan in Wisconsin. They've been up there acting like pickers for Legacy Collectibles because they shake the trees and guns are falling out. Seriously, they sent me a bunch of really cool guns that are going to be in this video, so I want to highlight those. Also, the Allentown Gun Show, I picked up some guns there. I had dozens of people come up to me, uh, shake hands, buy a book, uh, and I was amazed at how many told me that they actually watch my videos in bed with their spouse. Now, I, I don't know if it's true, but I, I've heard it can spice up your love life a little bit, so you might want to try that. Thirdly, I want to point out that I also got a, a, a bunch of guns from Canada again, Canadian Rescue, if you take a look on my floor. As soon as you see these oven mitts and these tags, you know they're Canadian Rescues. That'll be a whole separate video, so make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. We're going to start off, though, with this party leader in this video. Okay, we'll start off with the gun. Now, this grip is the grip that was in the video that I had repaired. If you remember, if you watched that video, uh, there was a large crack right here. It was repaired. I got a lot of comments, all positive, so thank you for that. Um, why don't I keep this with the gun that it came with? Well, that's because I uh, got this from Europe, and they couldn't send me the PPK. Uh, so it came on a PPK. The PPK was not in great shape. They cannot be imported to the United States, but I was able to buy just the grip, and I had it repaired. But now I have to put it on a gun. I don't have to, but I chose to put it on a gun. Uh, this gun, with this serial number, it starts with 226. That's in the right serial range. If people always say the right serial range, there isn't an exact serial range. There's an estimate that these grips were in the... Um, uh, party party member catalog, the ACA ca catalog, they, they were in the catalog in 38 and 39. So we know that this grip was available 38, 39. In fact, 38 is the first year this grip shows up, at least that we can find from the, um, from the catalog and from research. 38 was the first year this showed up, and this gun is from 1938. So I am, I'm flat out telling you this gun was a, a gun that had a regular grip. I needed a, thir a, a gun in this serial range to put this party leader grip on, and we did put them together. Uh, this magazine was with the gun originally, and it's a correct Walther Banner, but duller finish, finger extension magazine. You can see the original finish on this. Uh, I'd rate this about 97, 98%. So it's a very, very nice gun. Crown end proofs for 38 would be correct. And then also, uh, not with this gun, but also uh, in the same uh, time period, this came, actually this came from the Netherlands. Um, it's a party leader PPK holster. Uh, they did make them in tan, and this one I call a coffee color, darker brown. And then they also have some black party leader holsters, which I believe are all dyed. Uh, you can see this is a, a later one because it doesn't have the brass stud. It has uh, the aluminum stud. Uh, but this, you could buy these all together. That's the ACA marking, D-R-G-M. That's uh, the initials for the party approval. And then there's an ACA logo here, but you can't really see it. Anyway, this, this would make a, a nice uh, getup if somebody wanted to uh, put this all together, and as I said, this, this is the repaired grip that I showed in a previous video, and I married it to a gun that I already had in, in stock. When it comes to popularity, that uh, party leader rig is actually probably one of the most popular guns we sell, uh, and this is a close second. This is actually an SSPP. Uh, now, I do have a book. Here's a picture of the cover. I do have the book about SSPPs and PPKs, Walther's. Well, and uh, this would be in the correct serial range. Uh, you see the serial number here. Uh, and it also has to be on the slide. For this variation, it's also numbered on the slide. Now that's a little hard to see. I'll hold it there for a second. So this one does come with one matching magazine. It's easier to see right here. And it looks like it's the number two magazine. Uh, so an SSPP uh, from, let's see, this is about 1940. 
and it would be this particular number is not in the book, but it the uh, this range is in the book, and so you'll see the range. And it also would come with a black holster with black stitching. Uh, these did come together. I, I can't swear that this is the original one because somebody could have put it together earlier. But this, this I believe, came out of Wisconsin. But this gun and this holster came together. So it's an SS gun with one matching magazine. Beautiful finish, high polish finish, still some fire blue here. The second spare magazine, by the way, is an aftermarket magazine, but it's a nice placeholder for now. Okay, I'm gonna quickly show you three uh, beautiful PPKs. I've already shown you a beautiful PPK and a PP. Uh, this is a later war black grip Waffen stamp. It's a uh, beautiful condition. You can see the finish is uh, almost 99%, maybe 98%. So this is a late war, I think early 1944. It does come with a finger extension magazine and I don't believe the, the finger extension was included when it was issued to the army, but somewhere along the line, this was issued to a German officer uh, early 1944, somebody added the finger extension. I can swap that out or just leave it alone. Uh, but it's just uh, an exceptional uh, example of a late war PPK issued to the German military. Uh, then uh, most of you know about the RZM variation. Uh, this is in the standard range, which is 820. This is from 1934, late 34, early 35. Uh, it does have some uh, schmutzies, uh, whatever you want to call them. There's, there's some pitting that was cleaned off. This undoubtedly was sitting in a holster with had some moisture, held the moisture up against here and maybe here. And then over here, you also see some, some spots, but that RZM marking is, is just perfect. It's a, in, it's a reverse embossed RZM marking. Uh, that is correct. And you see the fire blue safety with a correct finger extension magazine, Walder banner only. I better show that a little better. Walder Banner only magazine. Uh, so this is from 1934 RZM. And then this one is just uh, pretty cool because first of all, it's a um, beautiful gun, nice high polish finish. You see the 90 degrees, 90 degrees safety, fire blue finish here. It's also early, actually it's earlier than the RZM. This is from about 1932, I believe. So a couple years earlier than the RZM. And you see the box magazine that is um, a, a pretty rare box magazine, Walder Banner. And you have to be really careful when you push these in because that hits right there. And if you jam it, you'll crack that piece. So we'll just be real careful. Uh, but there's a beautiful Walder PPK with a box magazine. There are a little, you can see the same thing. It sat in a holster, has a little bit of corrosion right there. And a little bit, well, not too bad right here, actually on top. So this, this probably sat in a holster. Otherwise, it would be a, a beautiful 99 percenter, but it's got a, a little bit of corrosion. Okay, I'm going to show you two femaroos. What I love about the femaroo, and I did, I've done videos about these before, I called them sleepers because they all went to the Luftwaffe. This is the first contract. Um, the, uh, and in fact, it's really early. You get, see here, you've got uh, uh, 7,000. They actually had a contract for 30,000 uh, that went to the Luftwaffe, and this is among the earliest ones. Uh, and in fact, it, it has a different slide. Let me show you the other slide. This is a little bit later. You can see here it is uh, JHV 43. So there was one contract in 41, and it doesn't have the date here. Again, it's a rare early variation, does not have the JHV 41 uh, because it was so early, and it does have a matching magazine. Uh, you may not be able to see it right there, but right here is the matching magazine. It comes with one matching magazine. Again, 1941, 30,000 of them went to the Luftwaffe. Um, and you see it uh, numbered here, here. And then when I pull the slide back, you can see right here, uh, the barrel is also numbered and it is all matching. Uh, it comes in uh, 7.65. Let's look at this one because this one, is from 1943. In 1943, there wasn't an, an order in 42, but in 43, they ordered 60,000 because they liked them so much. Uh, they ordered 60,000, but the factory only delivered uh, 30,000 and then they stopped production. So there's another 30,000 of these that were made. 
Uh, this is number, eh, it's probably a little over because this is 62,000. And same thing, it's numbered here, it's numbered here, and then the barrel is also numbered. And then this one also, I believe, has a matching magazine. My eyes are not good enough to see it, but hopefully you can check that out. Uh, now this one came with this tropical holster, which really adds to the value. These holsters are very expensive. They're called tropical holsters because they're, they went to the uh, North Africa campaign. They also came back to Europe when, when that campaign was over. But you do see uh, the maker, uh, you do see 41, and then the Luftwaffe stamp. This one did not come with this gun, but I, I bought them uh, from the same dealer. Uh, this has the same thing. It has, you can't really see it, but there is a 41 there, and then there's a, a very light Luftwaffe stamp underneath it. So another tropical holster. Uh, this, this holster, and you can see model 30, uh, 37, which is correct, and there's a GI, um, I believe a GI name and number, so we, somebody could research that. The, but um, I, I will sell these together, and then these two together. Okay, now I've got uh, four uh, unique pieces. Actually, we'll start with the unique. This is a French unique. You can see it right there. Uh, Model 17, I believe. Notice this little lanyard right here. That's a French, known as a French lanyard. And after the war, you'll see PPs that were captured by the French and used by the French police, and they added that little lanyard. Maybe Randy can find one, but we have sold them. Sometimes people will take that off and then fill in the holes because it's uh, for the PP, it is not original and so people don't like it. But the French did add that lanyard. For this gun, this is original to the gun. They were issued with that lanyard. Okay, walk down memory lane, 7.65. Um, and it does have a Waffen stamp, which may, means this one was made during the uh, German occupation and it is in better condition than most. So we will be offering this one. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful condition uh, model 17 unique. This is one we haven't had in a long time. They are fairly rare. Uh, it is a mo model 1934 and you see how beautiful it looks and you think, well, what's so rare about that? Because we have them all the time. Here's what makes it rare. That is the Eagle 655. Now, those of you who collect Lugers know that Eagle 655 is a Mauser proof, and there's a little Eagle test proof. So this one was issued to the German military. Uh, that proof mark is from at least about, I'd say, 1940. So probably in about 1940, they were already starting to make the HSC, which also they had HSC marked with the 655 proof. But all that is to say, this is a pretty rare gun. We haven't had one in a while, and it's in remarkable, gorgeous condition. So this one won't last long. Comes with the correct magazine, again, 7.65. That's the magazine that comes with it. All right, if you're not sitting down or if you are watching this in bed with your wife, you might want to stop what you're doing and pay attention because this will rock your world. Uh, I collect HSCs, don't have a lot of them, but I would say 99 times I can't get it out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, HSC, Mauser HSC. Uh, this is a police model. You can see Eagle L, that's a police proof. A uh, nice looking gun from about 1941, I believe. There's the serial number all matching. But here's what makes this so special. I started to say I only have about 98, 99% of them do not have any kind of numbered magazine. This one has one matching magazine. Actually looking at that uh, serial number, this is more like late 42. So that's the number one magazine. So it's got a matching magazine. Again, police almost never, you know, only about 1% will have numbered magazines. Number two magazine matching. So there's the gun with one matching, two matching magazines, and <gasps> what the heck? Look at that. The holster matches as well. So matching holster, police marked with two matching magazines. I got about... 50 people right now who want this rig. And guess what? I want it too. But <laughs> I probably will let it go because I can't keep, keep everything. But that, 
that is a very, very rare find and really uh, maybe only a 1% police uh, rig. Uh, now, in this grouping, I've got one more. I've got two Lugers to show you, so please stay awake. Uh, first of all, I open this up. It's a nice, cute little holster. It, it is a full rig, has a, a spare magazine. It is a Model 2, which is rare enough. Walther Model 2. I think this was made in like the 1910s, uh, between 1910 and 1920. Uh, it's got some standard wear on it. And, but this little holster, that, that's, that's pretty cool. It's, it's a hard find. This little holster is even harder to find. And if you look right here, surprise to me, there is an Aka logo. So this is an Aka. It also says, I can see the two, I think it says group two. Um, so that corresponds with the Model 2 spare magazine. And one more thing that comes with this, I'll lay this out and just take a look at, uh, I did get a note, I don't want you to look this person up, but um, uh, the, this came with a note, uh, and thank you, uh, Steve, for sending this and sending this document. It doesn't add a whole lot because it's just a story, and he basically says, I got this from a Canadian vet about 30 years ago. His name was Sandy Hines. Uh, he was shot down over France and helped by the French resistance. Uh, he basically taught, we worked together in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He brought this back from, as a souvenir from his time in Europe. So I don't know if it came from Germany or from France, uh, but he was uh, helped by the French resistance and I guess uh, repatri repatriated after the war back to Canada. Mm -hmm. Brought this with him, brought it to uh, Grand Rapids, and he sold it to Steve, and Steve just sold it to Legacy Collectibles. So it has a little bit of history to it. Uh, not able to document that history, but it, it's an interesting story, unless you know family members of Sandy Hines, who was a Canadian vet. Okay, I'm going to end this uh, video. Uh, I will do part two and three later, but this video I'm going to show two more Lugers from opposite ends of the spectrum, meaning this is uh, from pre-World War I. This is a Model 1906 American Eagle. You recognize the logo. These were made, this was a sales uh, tool to help sell them in the United States but they put the American Eagle on there, it made by DWM. The model is an 06 because it has the safety, the grip safety, as well, as well as the lever safety here. This is correct where they didn't finish it there. Uh, that's one way you know it's original finish. Uh, but this, this safety, you can see, uh, once, once the safety is off, it still won't fire until you grip it. And there are uh, several guns that have, uh, several models that have this similar design, including US. Uh, Colts and things like that that will have the grip safety. Uh, this comes in 7.65 7, uh, 7 or 30 caliber Luger. That's the correct magazine is blank because it is a commercial gun. Uh, the reason I wanted to show it to you is just look how remarkably beautiful this is. This is in 99% condition. Here's a little bit of wear where it, the uh, toggle rolls back and hits. So you just see a very little bit of wear there. And you do see a little corrosion right there and here, but otherwise it's near perfect condition. I'd, I'd almost venture to say this is about the way it looked when it left the factory and sometime after 1906. Uh, notice no stock lug. Again, because it's a commercial gun, uh, there was no need for the stock. It never went to the military. It was exported immediately to the United States, and that's the export mark. That's not considered an import mark. This is from the factory export mark and is correct for this variation. Now the other end of the spectrum would be this gun, not nearly as nice, but this is a pretty rare gun because not only is it a BYF-41, somebody's gonna say, oh, it should be a Black Widow. No, because this is a KU. Now I do uh, spend a chapter of the book talking about the KU variation. I don't, I don't close the chapter telling you wh who made these because there's some controversy I'd say the majority of the people believe that they were um, parts made by Mauser. We know that from these parts. Also here, the, the di dimple in here, the, if you read my book, I give you all kinds of indicators that say this is a Mauser frame, all Mauser parts, but at the end of assembly, they did put a Kriegoff proof there. So a lot of people believe that they were parts 
After 1942, shipped to Krigov. Krigov put them together, and they went to the Luftwaffe. So it is a rare variation. This one does have some corrosion. You can see it pretty obviously. There was some pitting that got cleaned up, but uh, there is some corrosion. But this can be a very expensive gun, especially uh, because it does have the matching magazine. And again, if you uh, read my book on Third Reich Lugers, it'll show you pictures. That is the correct font. They did a larger font. And that is the correct font. Also, the grips will have the full serial number stamped into both grips. So the grips are matching, the magazine is matching. Pretty rare variation of KU Luger that we believe was put together probably 43, 44 and went to the Luftwaffe. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today, you and your wife. Uh, learn something today. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because next I'm going to be showing you some Canadian rescues.